All right, cool. We're going. We're going. All right. We live. All right, cool, cool. All right, listen. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rodney. I'm back again with another video for my channel. My channel is about entrepreneurship and finances. So if you're into those types of things, definitely check out the content on my channel and go watch all my videos. Um, we like to talk about money here. So I have something a little bit different here. I'm interviewing uh, someone about sports betting. Okay, now, what does sports betting have to do with entrepreneurship? Well, there are people out there who are good enough at this to make a living doing this. They use sports betting as an investment. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about here today. All right. It's very interesting. I mean, when I met this gentleman um, and I, I watched his channel and went on his website and the way he breaks things down so that he found a way where you can actually profit on every single sports bet that you take. All right. And I thought that was amazing. First, it sounded too good to be true, but I'm going to let, um, Alex, break this down. All right. So we're going to um, toss it over to Alex. Uh, Alex, first of all, explain, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, about your background. Yeah. So, so, I mean, depends how far back we want to go, but I, but I'm from Virginia and then ultimately okay. I went to college and I, I loved gambling always, yeah, but yeah. I'm more math, mathematical. So like, you know, right. I would say what I ended up doing is I ended up you know, becoming a trader. So working on Wall Street trading, I always played mm -hmm. poker. I yeah. always loved to gamble, poker, everything. Uh -huh. but what's fascinating about gambling is there's like, you know, there's games that are skill-based, which I would say poker. Like everyone knows, you know, in general, like poker, you can do that. There are people, at least it's not easy, who do that full-time and make money. It, yeah. It's a skill-based game. Right. Whereas something like slots, you can't win, right? You yeah. can't win long term. chance. Right. Maybe you can go to the casino and you'll have a good night. But over the course of the long run, there's no professional slots players. There's no professional roulette players. Those mm -hmm. casino games are rigged against you. There's no skill. It's all it's all chance. And the way yeah. the odds are set up, you can't win. So it's very different from poker. So ultimately kind of started out with poker, then got into trading, which is where I worked full time. Okay. Sports betting legalized in the U.S. And it's surprising to a lot of people because, again, the sports book, just like in poker, right? Most people, if you go up against the pros, if you go to Vegas, the win, whatever, you try to play poker, you're going to get your butt kicked, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to win. And it's kind of the same thing in sports betting is like you can win. There are people who do this full time who make a serious amount of money betting on right. sports. Right. Um, but like, you know, it's more complicated than like, oh, I like the Lakers. I like LeBron. I'm betting on the Lakers, right? It's all math. It's all data. Very similar to poker strategy, right? It's not just mm -hmm. like you bluff your way into a full-time living playing right. poker. There's a lot of math strategy. Skill. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So ultimately got into sports betting, sports betting legalized in the U S it's state by state. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird because every state will have different sports books legal. So in California, you know, if you're in California, you won't have some sports books, but you'll have others compared to like New York has different sports books. So all right. these states have different sports books that are legal. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of profitable ways, strategies, data driven strategies that make money, you know, sports betting. Right. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so the name of your website is called odds jam, correct? Odds jam. Exactly. All right. And I've been on the website. This is a very robust website. I mean, there's a lot of information on there. A lot, a lot. So if you're into sports betting, you definitely want to check it out. Oddsjam.com. Make sure you check the description of this, uh, description box of this video. going to have resources down there for you. And you can also click on there and, and, you know, create yourself an account. It has a lot of features on it, the odds jam, okay? But what we're going to focus on today, right, is the arbitrage part of it. This is the sexy part of it, right? This is what I wanted to get on here and talk about, where you can actually make a profit every single bet, right? So explain to people exactly what arbitrage is, please. Yeah. So arbitrage is a financial term. Like, it goes back to kind of trading. And all it mm -hmm. means is if you can buy something and sell something simultaneously, to make a risk-free profit. Mm -hmm. So like arbitrage can occur in anything, right? Like let's say, you know, you really like this shirt at TJ Maxx, it's $20. And 
And then you could sell it online immediately for $25, kind of like drop shipping, whatever. Right, right, right. You take a risk-free profit of five bucks. You buy, you sell at a higher price. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I would say in stock trading, the market is too efficient. Like you're not going to find these opportunities, even in crypto, but in sports betting, the market's very fragmented. There's over 200 sports books in the U S and what's fascinating about sports betting is it's actually crazy. If you think about it is every sports book sets their own odds. Can I share my okay. screen? Show yeah, go ahead, me. please. Yes, definitely. Let's see if that works. Uh, it says it's disabled, but anyways, that's fine. Oh. It's disabled on your own. But yeah, if you want to take a look at that, but obviously, yeah, right. deal. but essentially like all these sports books, they all set their odds independently. So sometimes you can find these situations and granted they're relatively rare, but there's millions of odds on sports books, right? Like if you okay. consider, if you look at FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, these books have tens of thousands of markets, different things you can bet on. So across uh, the market, there's millions of odds. All these books are setting their own lines. Right. Sometimes models get super out of sync with one another, where you can bet the over on one book, the under on another book to guarantee a risk-free profit. That's called arbitrage. Right, it's, right. Not, it's not like a crazy parlay. Like this is not, oh, bet one to win a million. Not at all. But right. if there's an arbitrage bet for, let's say, 1% between FanDuel and DraftKings, two of the biggest sports books, mm -hmm. you can lock in that arbitrage bet, right? Make a risk-free profit of 1%. So if you bet $200, two bucks of risk-free profit, and it's not sexy, it's not glamorous. There's a lot of people who like learn how to do it. They have multiple sports books. There are people right. who make full-time incomes arbitrage betting, right? Really? Literally just day trading the sports books. Yeah, it's basically crazy, right? But yeah, so your system, so Odds Jam, try to screen share again. I I said something different. Um, so Odds Jam basically instead of people having to go out and search all the different sports books, it brings everything right to you. Correct. That's the beauty of it. All all the the ones where you find a loophole, basically, it brings it forefront in Odds Jam so that you can see them right in your face instead of having to search for it. Correct. Exactly. So the way it okay. works is again, all these states will have different sports books. So you can okay. kind of like whatever, select, so select the state you're in. People will have different sports books. You can filter mm -hmm. for the sports books you have access to. So like maybe you have all the books in Colorado. I don't know. And then, you know, there's a bit of a learning curve because you're going to need multiple sports books, right? Like right. that's the first thing I learned when I started gambling, you know, I had FanDuel and then I got DraftKings because I realized like these books have, you know, different odds from one another. So we okay. can find them between like, you know, like here's a simple example between whatever. We can pick any of them to look at Akron versus Indiana, right? There's this huge okay. discrepancy in where the books are setting the lines. Like it's crazy. It's, it's like bet 365, a sports book has this line priced at minus 333. So uh -huh. bet 333 to win 100 in profit. DraftKings is minus 214. Big difference. Huge difference, right? Yeah. It, it's literally like if you went to Fidelity and you saw Facebook stock was 214, and then you went to E-Trade and it were 333. That's never going to happen. But right. imagine how easy it would be to be a day trader. Exactly. Right? So essentially what people will do, arbitrage bettors will do, is there's this huge discrepancy between bookmakers so there's an arbitrage calculator that essentially just shows you how much to bet on both outcomes. So let's say you're like, oh, I want to put $100 down on one of these sports books that has this line plus 240. It'll okay. tell you, hey, if you bet 231.72 and you can round your numbers, whatever, you're going to earn a risk-free profit of 828. Doesn't mm. matter if it goes over 39 half or under due to this massive discrepancy between bookmakers you know, you're making a risk-free profit of 828. Yeah. And to a lot of people, it's like, oh, that's not sexy, right? We're not talking about a $10 to win a million dollar crazy parlay. This is like data-driven, day trading the sports books to make uh -huh. risk profits. It compounds itself over time. Exactly. You do it every day. It probably only takes a few minutes to do. So you can go on and do this while you're at work or something like that. Pick your team, yeah. go in here. Exactly. That's what I used to do. Get I money do every day. Exactly. Do this at work, do it before work. And what's crazy about sports betting is I used to be a trader. When yeah. does the market close 4 PM? And it's only like, this is something 
where you can do it anytime. There's always sports going on. There's always the inefficiencies in the market. Mm -hmm. So it really is the people who put in the work, the time, they're the ones who end up making the most money. Right. Um, like, you know, because I used to, I would check before work. I would check after work, make money sports betting, like pretty good. You know, like it's something you can do anytime. It's not like- right. You just have to be consistent with it. You just have to be consistent with it and you'll see your profits grow over time. It's like compounding money, almost like compound interest, almost sort of. It's exactly. just, yeah, your money keeps growing, but you have to stay with it. It's not like, like you said, it's not like a, you, you're you going to make a, a million dollars in one bet, then you call it quits. You, it's something you stick with. And, you know, if you like sports, this is perfect for you. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's perfect. Exactly. Um, I like that. I like that calculator on it, which is really good. A lot of people are going to find that useful. You can just put in how much you want to bet and it'll tell you how much you're going to make right away. So there's really no guesswork, right? Exactly. Exactly. So here it's like, okay, huge discrepancy between Tipico, who has this guy to get a single at plus 160. So like, you know, there's some more advanced videos explaining like, how do you know when there's an arbitrage bet? But Odds Jam is, you know, I say it in every video, but all these that that, that we do on the Odds Jam channel, but like, all these books have tens and tens of thousands of lines available. Like mm -hmm. you can see right here, you're really looking for those few rare betting opportunities that are right. Like there's not a ton. You're looking for mistakes. Where are sports books screwing up big time? Yeah. Right. And then you can just pull up the calculator. And again, a lot of people will always say like, Oh, betting, you know, here you bet 135 on bet 365, then it's mm -hmm. going to tell you, hey, bet roughly $90 on Tipico on his over. So these okay. are equal and opposite outcomes, right? It's literally like buying a shirt, then selling it for $5 higher. It's risk-free profit, right? Yeah. You're betting an over, you're betting an under, and you have no risk. When you do it correctly, there's zero risk. You just right. make money, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, so you can pull up the calculator. And again, what's crazy about it is a lot of people, you know, will be like, oh, nine, ten dollars risk free doesn't seem that great. It's like if you had access to both of these sports books, this would take you five minutes max. I mean, more like 10 seconds if you right. have if you, if you already have an account set up, you just go in there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really just like it is not traditional sports betting. Oh, the Lakers are gonna win. LeBron's good. Right. No. Like this is day trading inefficiencies in the market. Right. And again, what's crazy is what you mentioned is the compounding. This game is today. It's a 4% risk-free ROI. People you get think your money today. This. Exactly. You get your money today. And it compounds quickly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So um, in order for someone to get going with this, they have to set up accounts with um, multiple sports books, right? Exactly. How many would you recommend? Or is it just you go into a odds jam and then see, you know, how does how does it how does how do you recommend them going about doing that? Because that's that's probably the most time consuming part. I'm thinking is setting up multiple sports books accounts, right? It is. Okay. It, it is. But it's worth it. Well, one thing to mention, I can actually let me just pull one up. And a lot of them have the um, the sign on bonuses. Exactly. Right. So this is also crazy. I mean, when I first learned about it, but like, if you look up, um, you know, one of the most popular sports books in the, in the U S right now is called prize picks. Okay. And it doesn't even make sense to a lot of people. You can see right here, they have, um, an a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred bucks. You put right. in a hundred bucks, you get a hundred dollars for free. Just like when I first signed up for Robinhood, it's like, oh, you got a free stock or something. And exactly. the stock you gave me was worth like $4, but I mean, whatever, right? It's free. So, free. right. Most of these books take a minute to sign up for, literally. They have a bonus associated with them and mm -hmm. it's a marketing cost for them. Like a lot of people are like, why would prize picks give me a hundred dollars to sign up? And again, like there are, literally hundreds of sports books out there they have mm -hmm. to compete for new customers right exactly. so all these books are marketing against each other just like fidelity versus e-trade versus robin hood oh we have lower fees we give you a free stock yada 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 mm -hmm. most sports bettors are so unsophisticated the average sports book makes two thousand dollars off their average customer every year so wow. it's crazy so for them 
getting some degenerate gambler who has no idea what they're doing, offering them an hundred dollar deposit. It's nothing. Back. Nothing. Right. It's nothing. So, and this is only one, like you can see, you know, if we look up like BetMGM promo, I think right now they have, they have a $1,500 risk-free bet. So if your first bet loses, they literally refund you up to 1500 bucks. So all these books have promos. And mm -hmm. then the third thing that a lot of people ask is like, oh, what if they steal my money? And it's like the US, I get it, it's scary, but you're not betting with some sketchy guy in Russia. This is mm -hmm. BetMG, a $10 billion company that mm -hmm. is like tells around the world, there's a lot of regulations in the US is like, mm -hmm. your money's safe, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people- It's not, it's not worth them trying to steal your measly $100. Exactly. Right. Like a lot it's of people are like, what if they don't give me the bonus? It's like, why would a $10 billion company with its right. reputation, they have hotels all over the world. Right. Why right. Would they and also it's so regulated um, gambling in the U S so mm -hmm. regulated that right. these, books, you know, they're not going to steal, they're not going to steal your money. So it really is kind of, I mean, it's insane, but there's a lot of money to make in sports betting right now. And like right. I've been a gambler who's played, you know, I've been a trader. I've been poker, like in the gambling industry, my whole career. Mm -hmm. Since I was a kid, I loved poker. And it's like, there's more money in sports betting right now than any other form of gambling. It's blown up so much, man. It's blown up. Cause I remember I was, I was into sports betting back in like 05, 06 myself. And this is before, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is way before DraftKings and FanDuel I'm talking 05, 06. This is way before that, right? So yeah. I was into online. I was betting on sports. I was betting on sports online. And I was using, um, I think I used Bovada, right? Now they're they're still around, right? Yeah. They're still around. And they I never had any problems with them. I mean, and they weren't even, I don't even think they're based in the US, are they? No, they're not no. even regulated. And, right. and again, and I had no problems with them. Yeah, they have their reputation on the line at the end of yeah. the day. Like a lot of people are like, what if Bovada doesn't pay me, doesn't let yeah. me cash out my 250 bucks? It's like, uh -huh. they have millions of customers in the US. If they just screw everyone, they're not going to have any customers. And again, right. that's not even a US company, but the US companies yes. are so regulated. Right. There are, like, if if someone doesn't pay you, like, there are gaming boards that, you know, you can we'll go get to. on them. Long story short, like, the money is perfectly safe, especially mm -hmm. on the US sports books. Like it comes up a lot like, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable having my money in Caesars or when it's like these okay. are massive billion dollar companies. Your money's safe. Um, right. You can make money off them and their promos are good to go. Right. Okay. Like, even I tell people like my friends, even if you hate sports betting and you're like, this is boring, I don't want to do it. I don't care about arbitrage and you know, the risk-free profits I can make as a side hustle. I don't care. Uh -huh. These sign-up offers are still, I mean, you can make, depending like on, money. it's free money. Exactly. It's free money. It's free money. Um, exactly. So sports betting right now, it's not legal. Online sports betting is not legal in every state, right? It's maybe roughly half right now. I think 20 something. Exactly. States? Roughly exactly. half. Okay. So um, let's talk but, about the, the places where you, it's not legal. Like right now I'm in Georgia and it's not online gambling. Isn't legal here on like the fan duels, draft Kings, things like that. So what happens for those people? So it's not legal, but there are loopholes. Okay. So what I mean by that is there's a fine line in gambling regulation between what is a sports book versus what is a fantasy website versus uh, what is a lottery. Okay. So there are actually one of the craziest sports books that's taken off recently. And I can actually just, you know, entire, sorry for keeping sharing my screen, but I can that's fine. That's fine. try to, let's see here, is this sports book, if you just look up Flip Legal States, this sports book uh, got approved for a license where they're viewed as a lottery company, not a sports book. All they do is take bets. It is a sports book, uh -huh. but they do, and it's legal in all these states. So is that not every state, but a lot. So this is an example of some company that's like, you know, kind of navigating the law. And right. But what's different about it is it's not like a traditional sports book in that their betting limits are, 
are lower. You can only bet $250 per bet on Fliff. Most sports books are higher. So okay. you have to like do some regulations to be viewed as like, you know, a lottery company or a sweepstakes company. Mm-hmm. And then also you have companies that are viewed as fantasy companies, which are just sports books. I mean, they do the, they all do the same thing. They take bets, right? So right. this company, for example, is called underdog fantasy, right? James cook over under 58 and a half rushing yards right here. Okay. Like that's a bet, right? Like, but technically in the exactly. eyes of the law, it's a fantasy site. So these fantasy sites are legal. And if we go back here, like you can see here, where is prize picks legal? I mean, this is basically everywhere in the U S um, yeah. close to it. So there's options in every right. state. Um, it's just some states are better than others. So like, okay. for example, I'm currently in California. Okay. And every day I'm betting on probably 10 sports books, underdog fantasy, prize picks, parlay play, jock market, sports battle, fliff. There's tons of options. Um, whereas, you know, I'm initially from Virginia when I'm at home in Virginia, it's more uh-huh. FanDuel DraftKings. There's value on all these sports books. They all screw up their lines. So it's honestly beneficial to have, you know, more, but also what's crazy is the signup bonuses for sports books. This is just like a little pro tip is you don't even have to live in that state. So when Colorado launched sports betting, Colorado has the most sports books in the country. I literally flew to Colorado just to do the bonuses because I'll show you sports illustrated had a sports book. I don't know if they're still in business, but at the time when they launched, Mm -hmm. they had a $7,500 risk-free bet. So your first bet, if you lose, you get 7.5 K back. So what you could do is you could like hedge it on a different sports book. Like there's ways to turn that into profit, like uh-huh. bet the Lakers on, you know, here and bet the nuggets on, you know, DraftKings. And you can like hedge and figure out how to make money. Right. But like you don't have to live in Colorado. You just have to be physically present. Physically so there, there, are, yeah. there are people like, gamblers who have will travel to every state just to do the book sign up bonuses because a lot of them are lucrative like we really a hundred dollar wow. deposit match sports illustrated out of 7.5k risk free uh-huh. it's crazy that's crazy that's crazy that's crazy. crazy so listen your website oddsjam.com right um what do you have a um a free trial with this correct yeah, exactly. There's a free trial, money back guarantee. I mean, yeah, I would say sports betting has a bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we have, you know, like we're not in, we don't want to be in the business. Like we're very different than a traditional website. That's like trying to sell like Vegas Dave, right. Trying to sell you yeah. some, Oh, this is gonna, you know, make you rich and all that. Rich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very different. It's like, uh-huh day trading the sports books and we have people who do it full time i would Uh, say nearly every professional sports better uses odds jam at this point um at least one of the betting tools on odds jam so people who do this full time people who do this as a side hustle uh the point is just like using data to find better bets but there's a free trial again you know there's a learning curve to sports betting you're gonna need multiple sports books and it's not a quick thing right but you know Thousands and thousands and thousands of, um, uh, you know, happy customers throughout the U.S., Canada, Europe, who just are a little more data oriented and actually yeah. want to make money, right? They're make not money, right? They're not. It's looking. not for. It's not for just the guy who just doesn't even. You, I mean, the, the, your average customer has been betting on sports for a while. It's not like somebody who's brand new, correct? You I would think? say somewhat, although we do get a lot of people who just come from poker because they're more okay. driven, mathematical, yeah. entrepreneurial. They think yeah. more in that way than like slots. Yeah. So I would say we also get a lot of traders, people who understand markets. Right. I've done both <laughs> poker and the trading. So yeah. So we, exactly. So we, yeah. have, we have a lot, lot of first time sports bettors, but I would say they you know, they're not, it's not the people looking for $1 to a million parlays. Gotcha. (laughs) Okay. It's, it's the people who are like, look, I actually want to get an edge. I want to invest. 
like a non BS strategy for like making money and like mm -hmm. arbitrage betting, all these things are, are ways you can make money, sign up promos. So like odd jam has a bunch of tools to help out with all that stuff. Okay. Okay. And it's not just arbitrage. You have other tools on there. I think I mentioned that in the beginning. So yeah, definitely guys go ahead and uh, check out oddjam.com. Um, there's going to be links in the description down there. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you have anything else you want to add? No, nah, I mean, I appreciate it. And I mean, another thing is just, again, like even, you know, regardless of don't feel pressured to sign up, you know, for odds jam, but uh -huh. there is a lot of, there is a lot of money just in these sign up promos, which that's what got me hooked initially when FanDuel okay. first launched, I was living in Pennsylvania at the time, uh -huh. the Pennsylvania, New Jersey border is all these sports books launched with the thousand dollar deposit matches. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made like five thousand dollars in a day just putting money into sports books. Yeah. And like, sure, there's a little bit of work involved. You have to put in the money. You have to, you know, bet through a certain amount. But I mean, yes, easiest money, easiest money in in the world. If you're in into that, it's easy money. If you're into the sports, man, I mean, it's a, it's almost a no brainer if you're right there, especially since you were there. Exactly. So right. no, nothing else to add. And um, OK, but there's money to make in this market and there's uh -huh. money to make in sports betting. And, you know, it really is great because it's it's like trading and it's like poker. Those are really the only forms of gambling where you can yeah. win long. -term. No one's going to like you can't beat roulette long term. Right. Lose. Exactly. That's why whenever I go to a casino, I don't do slots and people ask, why don't you do the slots? I'm like this. There's no skill to it. You just like pull in the handle and, and and it's just up in the air. You know, I I, I like something where there's a little bit of skill to it. You got to think to it a little bit. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, Alex, man, I appreciate it. And remember, everybody, go check the description box. Um, if you're interested to check it out, there's a free trial there. Um, that's it. Give this video a like, share it, subscribe, and that's it. I'll see you guys later.